Boys in Blue, sponsored by Jacoby and Myers. You always had that reputation of being a very, very, very dedicated, tough guy, which led to the consecutive game played. And of course, you helped your other teammates in that terrific infield that you had. Well, that, that will never be replicated. The four of us, say Russell Lopes and myself, eight and a half years. Uh, two of the guys, Russell and, Russell and Lopes, were center fielders. You know, I was a, I was a wild arm third baseman. That didn't last long because the natural third baseman say came up. And then somehow, some way, uh, when Walter Olson asked me between double headers on June 23rd, 73, if I had ever played first, and I said, oh, sure. And that night I got a couple of hits and drove in some runs and dig ball the ball of the dirt. And that was 15 years later, uh, a wonderful career as a as a first baseman. If I had said to Walt Alston that day in 73, oh, no, Skipper, I've never played first before, probably you and I wouldn't be talking today. But when opportunity is in front of you, take it, go out and do the very best you can. And you never know when it might be divine and it might be, uh, you know, uh, being a short first baseman wasn't in vogue. And I think <laughs> Pete Rose and I and a few other guys made it that way uh, uh, in the mid-70s on. Well, that was that was really some classic games with the Reds and the Dodgers, yeah. no, matter wh no matter where you played. I mean, those are, those are games that we will never forget. If you look at 73 to about 85, and the All-Stars that were on, on the field every day that we played each other, and the sellouts every time, and, and eight of the 10 years, uh, I believe it was the Dodgers or the Reds uh, in the World Series. Uh, those great competitors, it was the, the mutual respect for each other and for, for the teams and for the fans that uh, it was arguably one of the greatest rivalries in history. What was your greatest moment, and there have been many, what was your greatest moment as a Dodger? Well, it had to be the World Series um, game six, you know, and it's... Uh, Reggie's at uh, first base, but it's two out in the ninth, and we, we've got the game. And, uh, and he says to me, Garb, it's your turn. You know, of course, he had the great three-run home run uh, night in 77. And he said, I'm proud of you. And he patted me on the behind, and I looked up, and it was 11.59. And, uh, and the next ball went up to Kenny Landro, and as soon as he caught it, I knew that my dreams had come true, playing wiffle ball and cork ball in the backyard with the Dodgers and the uh, and the Yankees. My parents were from New York. Mom was a Yankee fan. Dad was a Dodger fan. And uh, that was the culmination of, of my dreams. And and what people don't know is run to the mound. There's a great picture of me up in the air over Jaeger and Howe. And come down and Jaeger spins Howe. He clocks me with his elbow. I'm seeing stars. I'm I could have been I could have been knocked out cold on the mound 30 seconds after the highlight of my career. But the Irish show I held out and I staggered off the field. And, uh, you know, if you play a team sport, a world championship's the ultimate. Steve, do you fully realize the impact that you have, not that you have had, but that you still have on not only baseball players, but athletes everywhere because of everything that you have accomplished? I think people have been told or have seen me or understand that that I had a passion for what I did. I respected the the, the sport and uh, and even more importantly, the fans and, and and the people that come and pay their hard earned money to, to, to see us. And that's never ended. And from being a bad boy at the age of seven to being 72 now, I still uh, want to be a disciple every day for uh, the game, for sports in general, uh, for the entertainment business and for our society.